We have created a text object in Modeler. Now we need to bring it into Layout so we can animate it and render it. So we're going to load the object. Objects, load object. You see there's a little plus button. That's what I'll be using after this to load objects. Go to Logo. And there is my object. I want to have this logo come flying in and also have it look fairly attractive doing so. So first of all, you can do this a number of different ways, but I'm going to do the animation first. Go to my camera view, and I want this to happen over, let's say, three seconds. Now, in video, we have 30 frames per second. On our scrub bar here, it goes from 0 to 60. See, 0 over here, 60 over here. Three seconds, 3 times 30, is 90. So I'm just going to go over here, type in 90. Now my scrub bar goes from 0 to 90. And this is completely arbitrary. This is just determining the length of the scrub bar. Sometimes you have situations in longer scenes, you might be working on frames 300 to 720. You could punch that in, 300 to 720 just because you want to examine or work on the detail in that section. It does not prevent you from doing anything else. All this does is just specify the length of the scrub bar. Now when you load an object into layout to a freshly cleared screen, the camera and the object will, s will work together and center itself nicely in your view here. So this is actually where I want the logo to end. I want it to stop here at frame 90. So since it sits here in the very nice place, I'm going to create a key on the last frame, frame 90. So create key. OK, so I have two keyframes. That's these little yellow dashes here. I have one at 0, one at 90. Now I want it to come flying in from the distance and end there. So I'm going to frame 0, I'm going to move it back, move it over, click on my right mouse button to move it up so it's off the screen. Now my rendering field, see this dark gray? That is actually beyond the rendering field. If I resize my viewport here, I can make it so it matched up exactly. But it's kind of handy to see it right off the side. It is totally a piece of personal preface. Okay, so on frame 0, it's up over here. Frame six, frame 90, I want it to end up in the center. So let's run our scrub bar and see the mistake we've made. It jumped back, just like every student always tells me. I moved it over, but it jumped back. That is because auto key is off and it did not automatically create a keyframe for up over here. So I've moved it. I need to create key to lock it into place. And then it comes flying in in a very unattractive way. But at least it's doing it. Well, I'm going to go back to frame zero. I think now I'm going to turn on auto key. And I switch to rotate move it over here. Let's have it spin a little bit so it gives a little sexy tilt when it flies in. See how I've moved that but I did not create a key but it's not jumping back. That's because auto key is turned on. Now auto key can be a great tool. It can also ruin your scene faster than you can imagine. I suggest when you're starting off because you'll move things and you'll have it close to where you want and then you'll make a mistake and you can't get it back. That is one of the disadvantages of auto key. We do have one level of undo in 7.5. We have more levels in 8, but they don't always undo like you'd want them to undo. So I suggest leaving the auto key off in the beginning and just get used to create key because it does require a slightly more amount of thought
and in the beginning you need to think about what you're doing. So right here I have the object come flying in, turning, and landing. Okay, cool. Let's give it just a little more sex appeal by about halfway through. Let's go exactly halfway through. It comes flying in over here. And we have some contra body movement here. And we'll create a key. See, right now it's still a straight line. There's no key. If I create key at 45, there we go. And that is like 90% there. So I'm going to save the scene. Save scene as, we're going to call this logo 01. Now that scene is, is saved, it's a separate entity. Whatever I do to this now will not affect that save scene. If I decide to go in and rotate it and do something horrible to it, break key, it's like, oh, you know, I think I liked it better before. Well, then I go back, load the previously saved scene. It does not affect the scene that has been saved. So there it is. If I want to see this in real time to pretty darn close the speed and the motion that we'll, we'll find out, what well, we'll see when it's finally rendered, I make preview. And the make preview button comes up. Now this will not play in real time because of the nature of the screen capture utility that we're using. But you can do this on your own system. You can load up the scene. The scene is supplied on the CD. And then you can have it play. And by making a preview, you get a pretty good approximation of what the final scene is going to look like as far as speed and motion. And we can play it here. And if I hit the play button, you should see a pretty chunky display off the CD. But I suggest just loading it up, creating a preview. There is one more thing to make this good, and this is a huge mental step. Hopefully you've followed along so far. I just load the object. When it loaded, I create a keyframe on my last frame, went back to zero, create a keyframe up off in the distance. Halfway through, I just moved it to the side and put it there. One thing to make this cool is to give it a little bit of ease in. Now in Lightwave 8 we have a nice tool called the TCB tool that does it visually. In 7.5 and the 7.5 layout in 8 that button doesn't come up so we need to go to our graph editor. Now graph editor is a very intimidating looking thing but get used to it because it's amazingly handy and there's many things you can only do in the graph editor. The graph editor is this button that says graph editor and it's used everywhere in Lightwave to make things change over time. Now we talked about channels. Here we see the individual channels. We can see our logo, our position, and the rotation using our scale tool. We can see the difference to automatically see, to see all of them at once, or to select all of them, we hold down our shift key. Now all of them are highlighted. We can go in, we can animate just with our, in our graph editor if we wanted to. If we thought, well, we can make this bigger, or go the other way, we can do that. can move things around, adjust things, or even delete a keyframe if it's unnecessary, or we don't like what it's doing on that frame. But the important thing here, we want to get a little bit of ease in when that logo comes in. And it's hard to see unless you're playing it in real time, but it's easy to implement. I'm going to my graph editor. 
I'm selecting every channel even though it's not necessary just to make sure every channel is selected. I'm holding down my right mouse button and selecting all these keyframes on the very last frame, on frame 90, I'm set, setting my tension to 1. What this does, it creates an ease in effect when it gets to that final frame. The ease in means it kind of slows down and settles in when it gets there. See how this softens the curve as it gets there? Tension goes from 1 to negative 1. This would give a snap. It's going quickly and then it ends abruptly. On the other side, it eases in. Now continuity, continuity and bias also do things, but we're going to leave that for later. What happens now, and you can only see this if you render this out, even as a preview, it will settle in. And that is how you animate a logo flying in. So quickly to review, I'm going to clear scene. I'm going to use my plus button to load up the logo. There's our logo. I go to my camera view. I want this to be 90 frames. Go to frame 90, create key. Go to frame 0, move it off, rotate it, because I want it to fly in kind of sideways. Move it up and off, create key at frame 0. I need to go halfway through, move it over here, rotate it, and create a key. So now my motion path is like this. See, I have a little bump there. I want to adjust my spline tension. So with this op logo object selected, I click on Graph Editor, Multi Select my position and rotation, and just to be on the safe side, also my scale. Holding down my right mouse button, I'm selecting all the keyframes on frame 90 and setting my tension to 1. And you can see it's even smoother just in the viewport here, and it eases in. That is how you animate a flying logo. The next step is to texture this logo to light it and to render it. We will save this scene as Logo 2 and this will be on the content of the CD.